It's another day on the quiet waters of Cape Cod's Pleasant Bay. They ripple in the morning sun and support a multitude of plants, animals, and humans. For the past 10,000 years, this barrier beach has protected the towns of Chatham, Orleans, Brewster, and Harwich. But for the past 1,000 years, this beach has also been breaking up, reforming, and migrating slowly toward the mainland. The force behind this movement is sea level rise. This is Chatham's story. Uh, I'm sitting on uh, Nauset Beach on Cape Cod, right on the elbow of, of Cape Cod, the easternmost part of the United States. And it's a beautiful day. I'm looking out across an inlet. This is Pleasant Bay behind me. There are seals sliding through the inlet. It's a beautiful day. But if we go back to April 18th, 2007, it was a vicious storm. There was one person out on the outer beach. He was staying in a camp about a mile uh, to the south of me. 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, uh, torrential rain, and uh, you know the house was shaking because the wind was uh, the gusts were really hitting the gable end strongly, and uh, it was a wild night. Yeah. And then tell me, what was it like uh, the next morning? Well, the next morning, uh, the winds still were raging at dawn, and uh, I looked out my window the east and I saw that the entire frontal dunes were just covered with uh, wind-driven sand up to a depth of two feet. Uh, and then, and then uh, how'd you get off the beach? I waited till dead low tide to make sure I would have no problems, which was about five o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. And I drove off. Uh, you could see where the uh, tide and the waves had worn down the beach considerably, but uh, I had no real problems. I had to uh, stay on the ocean side right up to the snack bar and go up that way. And now, uh, only four or five months later, it's 2,000 feet wide, uh, and it's coming this direction. So I'm sitting here beside what's called the Achilles Camp, uh, which is one of these summer camps, and this camp will be gone in about a week's time. So that's the beginning of a real saga of sea level rise, and it will be a slowly unfolding story, but it's the sort of uh, story that, that other coastal communities up and down the United States and all over the world are going to be faced in the next 20 or 30 years as sea level rise becomes more and more apparent uh, and becomes more of a problem. In July, we were able to fly over Chatham to see the changes. To the south, you can see the old inlet that opened in 1987. To the north, the new inlet that opened in 2007. A broad plateau of new sand stretches far out into Pleasant Bay. But it was the camps on the outer beach that were the first structures to feel the effects of the widening inlet. In July, we visited Russell Broad at his camp on North Beach. You know, we've had 60 years, 60 happy years here, and uh, I'm sad for my kids. We have three kids and, and nine grandchildren, and they all love it here. It's been a very special spot for our family um, for all these years, and. I hope, I just hope somehow we can try to keep it. Russell Broad has been fighting a losing battle all summer to save his camp. Every weekend he pounded snow fencing into the beach. Every high tide the waves knocked it down faster than he could put it back up. You know, I've got roughly a quarter of an acre left that's not in underwater at high tide, give or take. So. And I used to have 3.6 acres. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Harris explained the loss of the Seymour camp. It came up, it pushed our house probably about 60 feet. It, there's a garage there, and the garage was already kind of buried in the sand. Do you have any idea how much you were losing the beach during those early years? In the early so years, not as much. It started building, uh, it's, we started losing it probably a, a good 20 years ago. Of course, this this summer alone, we probably lost 150. Right. Yeah. I mean, just since the break happened, it just yeah. has just yeah. crawled right and chewed it right off. Right. Yeah. Russell Broad had lost all five of his buildings. The poignant remains of the two camps were strewn for thousands of yards up and down the wave-swept beach. Donald Harris had lived in the Seymour camp for over 60 years. He described living in the camp and its loss during the offshore hurricane. Right over there on our front lawn, is, or where that sand is, was our front lawn. It's now 
what, five or six feet of water over it. And uh, so the whole part of my life is gone. There's no question about it. A few days later, we visited the next camp. It was not a particularly stormy day, but each wave was tearing several feet of sand from beneath the True Love camp. Wave by wave, the ocean tore the stairs off the camp. Then they attacked an outhouse on the side of the building. It finally toppled and floated beneath the camp, ending up in Pleasant Bay by the end of the afternoon. The following day, at low tide, the camp was still standing on its spindly pilings. The camp had to be demolished a few days later. In January, Kevin Eldridge was on the snowy beach as the batty camp was being attacked by high waves. He filmed as one of the side buildings eventually washed out to sea. Today, the inlet continues to move. It has migrated more than a half a mile north, sweeping away an entire village in a year and a half. This is the toll of sea level rise. From the Coastlines Project in Woods Hole, I'm Bill Sargent.